cockpit window shatters mid-flight, then the pilot is sucked out of the plane. When you're nestled snugly among the clouds at 20,000 feet, it can feel like you're floating, it's calm and quiet, when you're thousands of feet above the Earth's surface, but as the crew of British Airways Flight 5390 would tell you that can change in an instant. One peaceful morning in 1990, the flight crew suddenly found themselves surrounded by screaming wind twisting metal, in only a slim chance of getting everyone back to the ground alive. On the day of the flight, 6-10-1990, the weather was fair, and the passengers were eager to get to sunny Malacca Airport in Spain, they trusted pilot Captain Tim Lancaster and his co-pilot Alastair Acheson to get them there. Acheson handled the takeoff, it wasn't unusual for the copilot to do this essential maneuver, especially one like Acheson went long over 1,000 flight hours on the BAC-111 airplane, he gripped the controls, the plane climbing higher and higher into the air. The flight attendants bustled up and down the aisles providing pillows and taking food orders for the passengers, meanwhile, Acheson passed the controls over to Lancaster and both pilots loosened their shoulder harnesses then all hell broke loose two vital things happened after the pilots loosened their shoulder harness, the first was that the plane reached an altitude of 17,300 feet, the second was that Lancaster confident with the routine success of the takeoff loosened his lap belts a second, later a definite bang sounded from the cockpits to the 81 passengers on the plane, it sounded like something had exploded, that's because inside the cockpit with the two pilots control the plane, something had exploded a window, the next thing Lancaster knew, he was straining to open his eyes against the freezing wind, the air sliced past his body, and it took him one horrifying moment to realize that he was no longer safe and sound in his seat. As that exact minute flight attendant Nigel Ogden just happened to enter the cockpit, he watched in shock as Lancaster's body was shoved out the window, I didn't lunge forward and grabbed Lancaster's ankles blinking against the heavy condensation that had suddenly filled the cabin. Lancaster's knees were launched between the flight controls and Ogden ripped Lancaster's towards, so with all the strength she could muster, the flight deck door had been forced into words by the air pressure, and to Acheson's horror, the heavy metal door was laying on top of the control console, with Lancaster helpless on the outside of the plane Ogden, holding onto his legs for dear life, and the metal door covering most of the control panel. Acheson knew it was up to him to get everyone back to the ground, hopefully, in one piece, if only he could hear himself think, the sound of whipping wind filled the cockpit drowning out, air traffic controls instructions, as to what exactly Acheson needed to do, the seasoned pilot had always known that disaster was a possibility, but he never expected anything quite like this, the chaos worsened by the second. The autopilot had disengaged with the initial blacks, and the plane was rapidly diving towards the metal door, was leaning on the throttle which made the plane gain speed, as it quickly descended into the remaining flight attendants, scrambled to gather up the debris that had blown into the cockpit in the passenger cabin, as the only one left on board with piloting experience. Acheson did the only thing he could think of, using the few controls, he still had access to keep trying to regain control of the plane, behind him, the flight attendants reassured the passengers that everything would be okay, while instructing them to brace for impact, the seconds turned into minutes, as Acheson clutched the controls, Acheson knew that maintaining their altitude wasn't an option, not only was the air pressure sucking things mainly Lancaster out of the plane, but the plane wasn't equipped with enough oxygen. For every passenger on board, all Acheson could do was slowly maneuver the plane to a lower altitude, but it was impossible to ignore what was happening next to him, Ogden's arms which were tightly. He wrapped around Lancaster's legs were starting to get numb, he felt Lancaster slight inch by inch out of his grasp frostbite threatened to loosen his grip, the garbled sound of voices shouting, emergency instructions came from the radio, but actions it still couldn't hear them. Lancaster started to slip further and further out of Ogden's arms, and the sickening sound of his head repeatedly banging against the fuselage filled the cockpit all the new, he couldn't hold on any longer, luckily, two other flight attendants, John Stewart and Simon Rogers were able to take over, but no one was able to pull Lancaster back into the plane, once again holding tightly to the pilot. The crew was faced with a grim possibility, for some of the crew, it wasn't a possibility at all, but the fact, Lancaster was dead, the thin air, the freezing temperature, the crushing air pressure, no one could survive that, not even someone who's used to flying, and yet Acheson's instructions to the crew were clear do not let go of Lancaster he feared that doing so would end with his captain's body damaging the plane further, not to mention deprive his family of a body, to bury no they hold on but for how much longer. Acheson strained his ears and was finally able to make out the instructions from air traffic control, make an emergency landing at Southampton Airport at 8.55 a.m., 22 minutes after the disaster began, the landing strip came into view. Justin single-handedly landed the plane all 81 passengers including Lancaster back on the ground, of course two questions remain what was Lancaster's fate and why did the whole disaster happen in the first place. 
What happened on the plane that day was identified as an explosive decompression, basically, it's a drastic change in air pressure, led to Lancaster being propelled out the window, the real culprit, however, was rooted in human error and not the crew's, a thorough investigation into the accident revealed that it wasn't actually the windscreen side window itself that was faulty, but the bolts that are being used to install. It just 2007 hours before the bolts were too small and couldn't withstand the change in air pressure, the investigators were able to narrow the blame down to the shift maintenance manager would install the bolts into Birmingham Airport Management for not following proper British Airways protocol, but what about Lancaster and the rest of the crew? When they landed at the Southampton Airport, rescue teams were stunned to find Lancaster Blue Bruise bloodied, but very much alive recklessly Lancaster survived the incident, with frostbite a couple broken bones and shocked the flight crew, meanwhile, had a different feel. Atchison Ogden and the other crew members all recovered from the incident and were even recognized for their bravery and quick thinking, some of them were awarded the Queen's commendation of valuable service in the air, and Atchison got the 1992 Polaris Award for his heroic leadership Lancaster in, Atchison still went on to have long successful piloting careers, but not all flight crews who experience in air emergencies are so lucky.